Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. And uh, this video I'm gonna be doing today is very important. So grab a pen and paper, sit down. If you have to pause the video, pause the video. So I've come across a video by a gentleman by the name of uh, Gerald Morin. Now there's two of them. One lives in Montreal and the other one lives in Vancouver. You know, the guy that lives in Vancouver, I believe he's Australian. He has an accent. So I'm going to put the link in the video anyways. So <clears throat> he has kind of confirmed what I've been talking about all along. And that is the spark gap. All right. So uh, gap. Okay. The spark gap. All right, so what he has discovered is, all right, is what I've been talking about all along. It is opening up a gateway to extra power in your system. Okay, so he's got a generator. So he's got a motor. He's got a motor, okay. And then he's got that connected to a generator. Okay. So he's got the motor and the generator, and then from there it goes to a high voltage transformer, okay? And then from the high voltage transformer, it goes to a load. Oops, load. All right, so this is what you have. Motor, generator, high voltage uh, transformer, that goes to load, all right? When he's got it set up in this configuration, this motor here gets wound down so heavy that it starts drawing about 10 amps. Okay, that's a lot of stress on the motor. Okay, then you have a problem now with the generator. Not only is it getting loaded down, you also have a problem with lens effect. said okay you have a problem with lens effect now because this high voltage transformer is pulling a load off this generator okay that's a big problem so when he added a spark gap right there just before the load the amperage went to like less than 100 milliamps so you had about a 94 98% drop in amps. Soon as he added that spark gap right there. When he added the spark gap right there before, after the high voltage uh, transformer, the amps that were being drawn off the prime mover, the motor, went down. Not only that, the lens effect in the generator also went down to almost zero zero percent lens okay off the generator this is huge this is what i've been talking about all along the spark gap and more and more and other people are figuring it out you have to have the spark gap okay if you don't have the spark gap your transformer gets stressed, you get the lens effect problem with your generator, and your prime mover, your electric motor, will start drawing huge amount of amps. The second you add that spark gap there, your 10 amps almost goes away to almost zero. So now you're not stressing out your prime mover. And then also your generator has no lens effect. It's gone, completely gone, he said. That's according to Gerald Morin and this is huge now you got to understand we're working with a different type of power here okay you start off with regular DC voltage to run your your prime mover your motor and then your generator creates electricity to go to the high voltage transformer and that ramps it up to in the kilovolts and because of that 
you're now playing with a different type of voltage. You are playing with RF voltage. It's a different kind of voltage. I can take one pole, one pole of an RF uh, frequency and I can light up light bulbs with it. I don't need a ground. I've done this with my neon tube and my jo uh, Don Smith generator because I'm dealing with an RF frequency. Why do you think the governments control all the radio waves? Is because of the RF. It's a different kind of power. It's a power, you can power stuff with it, but also uh, you can power, not just power, you can power uh, and send radio transmissions with this. If you get a Tesla coil, all right, if you get a Tesla coil, you can actually transmit sound on a Tesla coil. You can buy them everywhere. You can get them on AliExpress. You can buy them on Amazon. It's a Tesla coil basically with uh, uh, a radio sound uh, module in it, and you can basically broadcast sound over a Tesla coil because it's not using regular voltage. It's using RF. All right, now there's one more. There is a motor called a BLDC. That is the motors in your drones, your drone motor. Okay, BLDC drone motor. It's three phase, oh, sorry, three phase RF. It is not regular voltage. When you turn a drone motor on, it will make that sound. Did, 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 did. Well, guess where that sound's coming from? It's not coming from the control module, it's coming from the motor. That sound is coming from the motor. It is not regular power. It is RF. All right? So if you're working with an RF frequency, guess what? A three-phase drone motor has a huge amount of torque and a huge amount of power using RF. It's a radio frequency. You put regular battery power in, it goes to the controller, and the power module, it changes that voltage into a high resonant frequency voltage. That's what runs the motor. And that's where the sound comes from. It comes from the actual motor. It's not coming from the control unit. It's coming from the motor. I have one at home. In the next video, I'll actually demonstrate this for you. So knowing this, the BLDC drone motor is a perfect motor for your prime mover, okay? Because it's using RF, it's using a different kind of power. So when you spin up a drone motor, the basically the, um, the amperage going into the motor actually starts to decrease. It doesn't go up as much as it would in a regular DC motor would or an AC. So that's the perfect prime mover for your generator, whatever it is. Okay, so Joseph Morin was definitely on the right on the right page with this because of the spark gap. As soon as you have the spark gap in front of the high voltage module, all of the load, all of the lens effect is gone. Zero percent lens, up to about 98 percent less amperage required by the prime mover. This is massive. This is like huge. So. This is like the key to getting true over unity, right there. So if you have any questions or comments, please uh, send them to me. I do apologize, I have tons of people asking me questions. Sometimes I can't get to it for at least a day or two. You know, I have to work too, I actually work for a living. Uh, so anyways, it, this is huge. So I'm gonna put the link for that video where uh, Gerald Morin talks about this. 
all right? And I believe it's about seven minutes in the video, the timestamp, so fast forward, it's seven minutes, and he talks about the spark gap. The second he put it in there, all this load problem on the prime mover, the generator, and the high voltage module disappeared. It was gone. And he was still able to power the load. So I just thought I'd run that by everybody. So if you want to pick up and toy around with the drone motors, I have one. It's actually quite a large one. And they're friggin' amazing. They're very well engineered motors. And they're a three phase RF powered. It is not regular voltage. You put DC into it to the, high, uh, to the module, the control module, and then from the control module in three phases goes to the motor. And I'm telling you, these things got a lot of freaking power. So if you want to use that as your prime mover for your, uh, for your generator projects, this would be definitely something to look into. So anyways, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down and we'll see everybody soon. Oh, by the way, uh, tonight I'll be uh, doing another interview with Bernie. So you can also catch that as well. All right. See you soon.